Today's video comes from a question from a viewer that actually arose from about three other of my videos. Uh, allow me to explain. It started with uh, video number 223, which was the basics of uh, the translinear uh, four-quadrant multiplier, or the Gilbert cell. And I did a video describing what that did, and then followed that up with video number 224 that showed how to use that Gilbert cell as a mixer, uh, similar to what's in the uh, you know, NE602 and 612 and the MC1496. And also I showed in video 224 how you can use that as a mixer to generate double sideband suppressed carrier modulated signals as well as AM and uh, really the difference between generating either of those two was the amount of bias, DC bias, applied to the baseband input. And prior to that I had done uh, other videos on mixers including the diode ring double balance mixer, uh, video number 167. So uh, the question that uh, my viewer raised was, well, I showed how you can get either double sideband suppressed carrier or AM with a Gilbert cell style mixer, but can you do the same thing with a diode ring mixer? And the answer is, of course, yes. So let's go take a look at it. I'll add links to all three of these videos uh, in the video description down below. So here's your basic uh, diode ring double balance mixer. Uh, this is the IF port and then the RF and LO ports kind of somewhat interchangeable uh, on either side. I think I labeled it RF over here. Uh, other data sheets you'll see this port labeled LO but for our purposes here they're essentially going to be interchangeable. And really the key in getting being able to do AM or double sideband suppressed carrier is carefully controlling primarily the baseband input voltage level and the DC bias on that port. Now this is the port by applying a DC bias we're going to essentially pre-bias diodes in one way or the other and that's really going to be the key to generating AM as opposed to double sideband suppressed carrier. You know, because the natural operation of a double balance mixer, uh, the balance meaning that the, uh, the two uh, inputs essentially get canceled out and you're only left with the sum and difference frequencies. Now of course for if you're doing a modulator that means you're going to get rid of the carrier, you're going to get rid of the baseband, you're only going to get carrier plus baseband and carrier minus baseband and that's the definition of double sideband suppressed carrier. Now we want to reinsert the carrier so we essentially have AM and that we're going to do that through applying DC bias. I'm showing it schematically here as a variable DC source through a resistor, it could be a couple of hundred ohms. Um, in my particular case, I'm actually going to be using a signal generator that I can add DC offset to, so I'm not really going to have a separate DC supply. If you're building your own uh, modulator, you may have another scheme of doing it. I'm just schematically showing it this way as an example. Now normally when using a mixer like this, you know, the ports can sometimes be driven kind of hard uh, for the conversion uh, to ensure that you get good uh, rejection of the uh, LO, for example. In this particular case, where we're using it for a modulator, we're actually going to be driving the IF port very lightly. And really the key is to keep that baseband signal level down to 100 to 200 millivolts peak to peak maximum. Because you really don't want to drive the diodes too far non-linear because you will actually create distortion in the modulated signal. So the first key is to keep the baseband signal levels low. And the second key obviously is to adjust the DC bias to, uh, adjust, to get the level of amplitude modulation that you want. So let's take a look at it on the scope. It's probably the easiest thing to do. So this is the circuit we're using. It's a mini circuits ADE1 uh, diode ring double balance mixer just mounted to the board here. Uh, the IF, RF, and LO ports are right here. Uh, the IF port is the low frequency port. That's the one we're going to be applying the DC bias to in order to uh, adjust the type of modulation we're getting. And I'm probing that with uh, channel 1 on the scope. And then uh, my RF input is coming in and then the modulated output is going out to channel 3 on the scope. So here's my modulated RF output and there's the baseband input. And you might quickly look at it and say, oh, that's just AM. Well, it isn't really, because if you take a look at it, I've actually got two lobes here for every single you know, peak that I have on the baseband waveform. In fact, if we line these guys up, you can see actually what's happening. Uh, so what's going on is uh, 
where when the baseband is going up, the carrier is being driven, you know, higher and higher, you know, through the mixing process. But then when we cross through zero, we're getting um, you know, the essentially the carrier is being inverted. Okay, and its being, its phase is being inverted each time we go back and forth, and this essentially creates a double sideband suppressed carrier waveform. If we look at the frequency domain content using the FFT, we can actually see the upper and lower sidebands of the baseband signal, in this case which is 5 kilohertz, so that's plus or minus 5 kilohertz around the carrier, which is suppressed, and it's about 20 dB per division, so that carrier is down about 40 dB. And to illustrate what's happening, I'm going to uh, just adjust some of the offset levels here uh, on some of my signals and uh, line up my RF waveform and my baseband waveform. So the ground references for both of those are sitting right here now. And I'm going to add a DC offset to the baseband waveform and you'll see the effect on the RF envelope and also then take a look at the effect of what's going on uh, with the suppressed carrier. So as I add some DC offset to the baseband signal, notice that the RF envelope is kind of following that positive peak and the negative peak here. So I'm in the magnitude of the inverted portion of the carrier is getting smaller, the magnitude of the non-inverted portion of the carrier is getting larger. As I keep adding that DC offset, you can see the carrier is now coming up, and we get to the point where we get no inversion anymore. In fact, if we bring this up, now I have something you know less than 100% modulation, but the baseband is completely controlling the amplitude of the carrier, and I've got true AM. We can actually back this down just to the point where I start to extinguish uh, right at the crossing point here, and now I've got essentially 100% uh, amplitude modulation, where the carrier is 6 dB higher than the remaining sidebands. And again, if we bring that offset back down, you'll see that carrier magnitude coming down with respect to the two sidebands. And if we keep going the other way, the same thing happens again. So the direction of the offset really doesn't matter. As long as we offset the baseband enough to essentially pre-bias the diodes in the ring so that none of the diodes effectively get switched off. You're essentially just turning them on, a turning them on and turning on a little bit harder. And the idea with keeping the baseband waveform relatively small is you want to you, know, you don't want to uh, modulate those diodes over a large nonlinear portion of their range. I'll show you what happens if we do that as well. Now I've tripled the magnitude of the uh, baseband signal. I've changed the vertical scale so you really can't can't doesn't look three times larger here now. But now that it's larger, if I go and adjust the offset, take a look at what happens here. So I'm bringing the offset back up again, just like we did before. But notice, as, as I get to the point where I've got full amplitude modulation, I'm flat topping up here. Okay, And that's because I'm just driving those diodes further and further into that nonlinear you know, operation. So I'm modulating over too much of the diode characteristic. And you can see the distortion in the, in the AM waveform, as well as all these, you, know, you can see all those distortion products in the frequency domain here as well. If I go back and reduce that amplitude back down again, that's back, back down to where I was, and let's go start knocking the offset back down again, and I'm just going to bring my scale back up here so we can kind of see it. There we go. Well, let's go here. So now we're kind of back to where we were again. So again, keeping that baseband waveform to about 100 millivolts peak to peak, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, you get pretty decent modulation characteristics and very low distortion out of a typical diode ring double balance mixer. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's short video answering a question about how to generate double sideband suppressed carrier or AM out of a diode ring double balance mixer. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And thanks again, as always, for watching. See you next time.